everybody and welcome back. Welcome to July and we're starting off the seventh month pretty much on par weather-wise that is heat, humidity, and a chance for some severe weather during the overnight. I'll tell you how much of a chance of what we expect to see how it may continue into your Wednesday and how this cold front that's causing all this activity is going to leave us just sitting very pretty for the 4th of July holiday. And on that note, I've got a couple of tweaks and announcements to make for your local 4th of July celebration. Very excited to bring one portion of it to you. It will lead into another report and a debut here on the program tonight. We've got some entertaining news and ground, pardon the pun, to cover. We'll get to all that in just a second and some other headlines, of course. Your forecast does call for some severe weather during the overnight. We're on the lighter side of that possibility or probability if you want to go there, but I'll tell you more about that in just a few moments. And we are still, as I said, looking at a very nice forecast. Just a couple of things from elsewhere across the state, and just briefly tonight, a federal judge has struck down Kentucky's ban on gay marriage. A federal judge ruled that, quote, even sincere and long-held religious beliefs do not trump the constitutional rights of gay couples or their right to be married in the state of Kentucky. However, federal district judge John Habern, in his ruling, did put a hold or a stay on his ruling in lieu of other several other cases on gay marriage that are pending before this Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, one of those including a ruling by Judge Habern himself that Kentucky must recognize valid marriages between same-sex couples that are performed in other states where they're legal. He also agreed to hear a case by other same-sex couples seeking the right to marry in Kentucky. Today's ruling applies to that second suit, and Governor Steve Bashir, who filed the appeal of Habern's ruling earlier says he will appeal this second ruling as well. Well, taxes didn't go up in this department at least. The Kentucky Department of Revenue has set the 2014 state real property tax rate at 12.2 cents per every $100 of assessed value in Kentucky. Kentucky Revised Statute 132.020 requires the Department of Revenue to, of course, set the real property, ta real property tax rate no later than the 1st of July each year, and this rate is based on the revenue generated from the increase in taxable real property assessments from 2013 to 2014. If the revenue increases more than 4% after the exclusion of new property added to the tax roll during 2014, then the prior year rate must be reduced. Speaking of rates, if you will, electric rates. My utility bill at the house, well, certainly drew some attention. It went up from one month to another considerably, but so did our electric usage. I've been pretty candid over the years that we, uh, we take in a lot of juice at the house with a whole lot of appliances and other things going far often than they should, far too often than they should. However, when I looked at my usage rate and picked the closest month just a few months ago that had nearly identical usage rate, the bill was about $140 different. And it all comes down to something that was approved by the Public Service Commission. That would be the purchase of a couple of power utilities by Kentucky Power and their effort to pay off about a fourth of that cost. And this is what my June bill looked like. The actual usage for electricity just in and of itself was $389. Told you I used a lot. Then, of course, there was a fuel adjustment and some other adjustments of residential heap, school tax, franchise tax. The biggest culprit, in addition to just the usage itself, which per kilowatt has remained the same. There's not been an increase in the per kilowatt charge, but appeared to be this. Right where the cursor is on your screen, the asset transfer rider, which was right at 16% of my bill, and that equated for $71 of it. And that's a significant chunk, not all of the increase. I actually had this bill and compared it to one in September, which had within 80 kilowatts of the same usage. There was a difference of $140. But the biggest culprit that I could find, besides just being hot out and us wanting to stay cool in the house, was the asset transfer rider, 16% or just about. And certainly for, certainly for those AEP customers who use you know more than the average amount, it's more noticeable. And if you'll notice on your prior bills, well, look at this. Last month's Asset transfer rider, 6.2%. In fact, if you go over the past several months, you can find it as low as 4.5% for the month of April. 
So therein lies the question, what is the asset transfer rider, and why did it go from 45 to 6% to 16% this month? On my bill, that equated to about a 50%, $50 rather, increase. Well, it goes back to a report that we aired, I guess, towards the latter part of last year, first of this, that Kentucky Power had filed a stipulation and settlement agreement with the Kentucky Public Service Commission. They asked that if it would have been approved, it would authorize the transfer of 50% of the ownership of two power generating units from AEP Ohio's Mitchell Power Plant near Moundsville, West Virginia to Kentucky. Now keep in mind, they're both, they're all owned by AEP, but they were asking to purchase, well, purchase 50% of those two plants. Now the reason for this was because of the EPA regulations put forth on the coal fire burning plants, such as the one in Louisa, the Big Sandy plant. The agreement called for establishment of an asset transfer rider. But the bottom line is that they said that it would be cheaper, $379 million cheaper over 30 years, or as much as $819 million cheaper than installing the sulfur dioxide removal equipment or scrubbers at the Big Sandy plant methods or steps it would take to make it meet EPA requirements. So they said it would cost savings. It was cheaper for them to spend about $148 million in purchasing 50% of these two plants, and they asked that the customers pick up the tab for $44 million of that. And in October of last year, Kentucky Power and the Public Service Commission came to the agreement under a modified settlement agreement that that would be acceptable and that $44 million will be split up over a monthly basis and a percentage basis, and AEP customers would have to have that added on to their bills. Now, I also spoke with a representative of the Public Service Commission as a customer and not as a news representative because that entailed me going through the legal department and a whole other telephone conversation that I didn't want to start. But they basically referred me to documents on their website, and these are they. It all comes down to this formula, which would take someone with a much higher mathematic education and qualification to decipher, but it comes down to this formula. And basically $44 million is to be recouped through the customers, a portion of that $148 million where they bought into those two companies to, in the future, provide us electrical service after the Big Sandy plant is no longer generating, of course, by EPA regulations. And it's based on that formula and can fluctuate, as I just explained to you. And it's gone from 4.5% to 6.5% for whatever reason that I couldn't understand and they couldn't tell me. It's gone to 16 this month. They could tell me, however, that it will fall back to 13% next month. After that, I have no further data. But that is the asset transfer rider. In the good as of an explanation as I can provide. Coming up after the break, a Johnson County man is still in jail after a fourth request in bond reduction for the murder of a Johnson County woman. I'll have a report and more headlines to follow. As we celebrate our independence as a nation and those who have fought so bravely to defend it, we also want to wish you a safe and joyous 4th of July. From everyone at Sagersville Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, where maintaining a loved one's independence or providing them with long-term nursing care needs are always done with a standard of excellence and a tradition of caring. Dick Prestonsburg has put liquidation prices on over 600 first choice, pre-owned, like new vehicles with one time only savings and they're giving away huge prizes for their big event. You have to bring the flyer in to win an Xbox, iPad, gas grill, 50 inch flat screen TV, Walmart gift cards, or a 2014 Chevrolet. The big event at Discount Auto Brokers in Prestonsburg. Only the biggest sale on the region's biggest selection. Only now through Thursday, July the 3rd. Bring your flyer in today to Discount Auto Brokers. Got company coming? Looking to visit Sagersville and family or just get away? Then come stay with us in one of two newly restored and uniquely appointed lofts over downtown, filled with history throughout. With a luxurious touch, king beds, free Wi-Fi, HD TV, and enough comfort to sleep one to ten guests, book your stay at the Mortimer Lofts by emailing to reach Sue at yahoo.com, find them on Facebook, or call 349-3299. Sagersville National lets you go mobile with their new banking app. 
That's right, you can view your account and balance, transfer money, pay bills, and yes, deposit checks right from your phone from wherever you are. Just download the Sagersville National Bank app on your Android, iPad, iPhone, or other device. Any phone that can connect to the Internet has the capability, and you can start saving time and money today with Sagersville National Bank's new mobile app. Wherever you are, we're there for you at Sagersville National Bank. Wheel alignments, oil changes, brakes, suspension work, and tires. Thousands of tires by all the major manufacturers, all in stock and at incomparable prices. All backed with 33 years of service and experience, the area's largest tire selection, and six months no interest at Conley's in Paintsville. Have you ever noticed how many insurance commercials and advertisements are on television nowadays? You can't watch your favorite program without seeing a little pig or green lizard trying to sell you insurance and get your money for their premiums. But let me ask you this. If you have been in a serious wreck, do you really think that you are in good hands of the insurance companies when you have lost wages, medical bills, and pain and suffering from your head to your toes? The answer is no. If you want to truly be in good hands, give me a call. I'm attorney Donald Wayne McFarland. Let me put my 20 years of experience in working to protect the rights of injured people to work for you. 349 9000. Remember when they invented the peanut butter cup? Bringing peanut butter and chocolate together. Pure genius. Well, the Sonneman Juro has done the same thing for wireless. Right now at Appalachian Wireless, you'll find the tough, dependable Sonneman Juro. This flip phone is great for the job or weekend warrior, but you can also access the internet and take great pictures with a two megapixel camera. Get it now, the best of both worlds, just like the peanut butter cup. Appalachian Wireless, better service, bigger savings. Last September the 18th, the family of Christina Barnett says that she got into a vehicle with a man from Johnson County as well, but that she had met via the internet and was taking a day trip, if you will. She didn't return home. Her body found a week later, exactly one week later, on Route 80, partially burned, badly decomposed, and left lying off the roadway. After that, some days later, a few weeks later, Johnson County resident Gary Ward was arrested for her murder. And as of just a couple of days ago, through his attorneys, had requested for the fourth time a bond reduction in the case. This past Thursday in Knott County Circuit Court, in lieu of the fact that's where it is believed that the crime took place, attorneys for Gary Ward requested a fourth bond reduction. Now, this was after three other requests. One of those, the judge did grant a bond reduction from $500,000 in cash to $300,000 in cash. This time attorneys on his behalf requesting another bond reduction also that he being allowed he be allowed to serve home incarceration at his parents residence pending trial. The judge refused that request and ruled that the bond stayed as it was at $300,000 cash pending trial and that no property would be allowed to suffice for any of that $300,000. Meanwhile, a pretrial hearing has been set for Gary Ward for November the 13th. He is still being held at the Kentucky River Regional Jail on charges of murder, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with evidence in the death of Christina Barnett, who was found exactly one week later after she went missing, as I said, along the road in Knott County on Route 80 by a small search party of friends and family who would not give up their search to find her and sense justice in her honor. I've got some big announcements coming up for the 4th of July in just a few moments right now. Let me tune on over to tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau sponsored community calendar. A reminder, Rumpke is closing tomorrow at the transfer station at 2, but they're still collecting garbage tomorrow as they will on Thursday and Friday of this week. They will not be changing their schedule in lieu of the 4th of July holiday. Collection will go on as normally scheduled. All drivers running their regular route for the 4th of July. A couple of yard sales to pass along. The Mount Sinai Church of God has another yard sale, or has a yard sale another couple of days. It started today. It's tomorrow and the next day on Route 40 across from Challenger Drilling. And the Bradley Free Will Baptist Church of Burning Fork has a yard sale starting tomorrow. It is tomorrow and Thursday starting at 9 a.m. This is inside and out, so rain or shine, doesn't matter. And there won't be any picking or grinning at the Kearney Free Will Baptist Church due to the 4th of July this weekend, but a big reminder and a tasty one. 
Kearney Free Will Baptist Church will be selling funnel cakes and deep fried Oreos at B and B Tobacco on this Saturday during the fourth. So when you're in town, stop by for a treat. The McGoffa County wide cleanup for residents of voting district one begins next week. And then the week after for District 2, the week after for District 3. Vacation Bible School at the Hope in the Cross Community Church next to True Value on Parkway Drive is next week, Monday through Friday, 6 to 8.30 each night. And the theme this year is Courageous Kids, We Wear the Whole Armor. Pastor Glenn Sloan and everyone at Hope in the Cross welcomes you to attend, kids. We welcome you to use the calendar. Birthdays, anniversaries, announcements just like the ones you heard, they're always free. And this is how you get them on the program. Funeral service announcements this Tuesday, July 1, brought to you on behalf of the McGoffin County Funeral Home with services to be held in honor of Linda K. Johnson Patrick, 64 of Falcon, who passed away on Monday, the daughter of the late Milo Johnson and Edith Pemberton Hughes. She's survived by her husband, Jerry D. Patrick, and daughters Sharon Salyer, Pam Hall, and Tammy Ward. Visitation is this evening and any time prior to services. They are tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I apologize for the to be announced on your screen. Services are tomorrow at 1. Visitation tonight and tomorrow before services, all at the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Burial will be at the Adams Cemetery at Falcon. Faster, friendlier, family-owned Parkway Pharmacy open 8.30 to 6.30 Monday through Friday in the new McGoffin Medical Plaza under the care of local pharmacist Jesse Rudd. To make Parkway Pharmacy your pharmacy, come by or give us a call at 349-4400. It's back and it's here through July the 10th at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, free chicken. That's right, you get free chicken, two legs and two thighs free with every eight-piece box of chicken. Three legs, three thighs with every 12-piece box of chicken. Four and four with a 16-piece box and five legs and five thighs with every 20-piece box of chicken. That's a family meal deal or a box of chicken. You get free chicken now through July the 10th and only at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. The end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. He hangs up his fire suit. And he hangs up his helmet which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Four teams must go immediately. It's Hot Chevrolet's triple, triple bonus employee pricing. That means for a limited time, buy any new 2014 GM vehicle at Hot Employee Pricing. Plus one, you get to keep the rebates. Two, a free family beach vacation. And three, get two years free maintenance. Tri triple bonus employee pricing. Only at Hot Chevrolet Buick GMC in Paintsville, Kentucky. Or at HutchChevrolet.com. Enjoy your fun in the summer sun even more with festive settings of the season from the seasonal shop that look good enough to eat themselves. Monogrammed and summer flags of every shape, size, and shade of summer and other ways to say welcome, friends. And just in, new and already classic designs by Ethel and Myrtle, ladies, all at Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop, just down from the drugstore and the radio shack. You can be playing, relaxing, and enjoying your brand new lifestyle in just days with one call to Baker's Pool Supply. Over 38 years of professional installation at affordable prices on above ground and in ground swimming pools. Or if you're ready to open your pool for the season, you need a new liner, a solar cover, some parts, or the best in BioGuard chemicals or salts, Baker's is your full service answer, serving all of Kentucky and surrounding states with complete satisfaction, and they offer financing. 800-633-7102 or Baker's Pool Supply. Com. Frito Rocks is more than just gravel. They've got mulch in red, brown, and black. River Rock in four different sizes. New Rainbow Rock for an entirely new landscape feature. Metal and double wall plastic pipe, masonry sand, and rock. Every size from DGA to 57s to class 2 and 3. And they have delivery and excavation and dozer services. And special hours, Monday through Friday, 4.30 till 9 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 till 4. For orders, call Frito Rocks on Route 7 at 496-7776.
Just in at Premier Auto, like new at used prices, a 2012 GMC Terrain SLE, $23,950. The ever-popular Kia Optima, this 2013 is $19,950. A 2014 Chevy Captiva Loaded, $24,950. And check it out, an 85 Elko, custom, slick, straight, and rare, all baby inspected and baby approved at Premier Auto in Paintsville. Regardless of where you want to ride, you can be riding on a brand new Kawasaki or Polaris for less at M&M Power Sports in Staffordsville. New Kawasaki's for the dirt, the street, or both, and ATVs and side-by-sides for every stage of enthusiasts to fish, hunt, haul, or play. And with rebates up to $1,300 and financing as low as 3.99%, it's never been easier to ride it, buy it, and start your next adventure at Kentucky's Power Sports Authority since 1964, M&M Power Sports. As I said earlier, I indeed spend a little more time than usual on the telephone today for a couple of reasons, one of those being the report earlier about utility bills and the other couple of reasons all centered around the 4th of July celebration here in Sayersville and McGoffin County. I've got an announcement to make in regards to the fireworks. We told you last night and confirmed that they will be going off over Sayersville on Saturday as customarily is the case. The location though is something we want to talk about tonight and I'll explain to you why. And also backing up on that, though, we've got an announcement to make about this Friday evening, and that will be a prelude of our outgoing report tonight. A couple of additions to make, but first, a reminder, you know, we all have traditions, and here in Sagersville, McGoffin County, the Firecracker Pageants have become one, and they will be this Thursday, 6 o'clock, and that's the Firecracker Pageants at Sagersville City Hall. Mind you, they're having to fashion a stage there. Uh, to change the venue, but the firecracker, Miss Teen, Miss, I don't know why I have Mr. there. That was a typo from earlier in the week that I haven't corrected. Nevertheless, the pageants for the 4th of July, 6 o'clock, this Thursday at Sagersville City Hall. Now, the excitement starting to build in my voice because of Friday's event and the Watermelon Social. I spoke with Jensie Bailey down at the Sagersville Renaissance earlier in the week, and it was missing some entertainment. And in no way, shape, or form trying to take a look credit at all for this. But the stars did tend to align earlier today when I realized that Turning Ground had a little room in their schedule for Friday. So, with a some few phone calls, uh, some downright begging, not just on their behalf, but just to make it all come together, they were excited to play for us at the Watermelon Social. So, Turning Ground among other songs, we'll be performing tracks off their brand new CD that I'm going to debut for you a little louder in just a few moments, at least in brief, will be playing in the Ramey Park this Friday for the Watermelon Social. The social starts at 6. They'll start picking around 7 o'clock or so. The weather's going to be nice and cool and comfortable. A beautiful evening under the stars to do nothing but relax and enjoy turning ground. And when you get a chance to hear their new CD, for those of you who haven't, a lot of you got to hear it at the Mac, it is simply awesome. And picking one song to play tonight was it's just been a it's been a nightmare trying to do but then i realized well i'll just play one every night for a while and that gets me off the hook and makes it so much easier for me to, to decide turning ground this friday in the remy park for the watermelon social for the saturday events the parades all still the same i just want to mention that the fireworks will be going off from the remy park this year they did that last year because the weather prevented them from getting up on the hill well there's been some other issues this year and the pyrotechnics company has promised me some larger shells and a lot more of them that will be much more easily seen than the ones they had last year, which were of a, which were of a very small nature. Uh, really not even appropriate for up on the hill, but they would have been better off up there. So due to that and some other stipulations, that it just it kind of had to be that way. It was the only way it was going to work out. It's going to allow the finale to be twice as big, twice as many shells, and a couple of different size ranges. So they've promised me that it's going to be a really nice show. It will be going off from the park, so make sure you get situated close to the Remy Park where you'll be able to see it. It will be a little more visible than last year, certainly, but it will be from the park and not up on the hill as it had been for the many years prior. With that, I'm going to make brief of your forecast tonight just so I can play you one of the tracks off of their new CD that I just got my hands on a few moments ago. I just don't want to make light of your forecast. We had 90...
7 degrees today here at the newsroom. Heat indices around 101 degrees. We're still close to that at this hour if you're watching the early show. A lot of humidity and a lot of factors and an approaching cold front that will give us a chance of some showers and storms. For us, I think it's going to be after 11 and right now on the slighter chance of things. But keep your eye out, you know, how it tends to warm up and heat up and blow up all at once. And that, that is the scenario that could happen. It's also one that could have an effect on tomorrow's forecast as well. Look for a high of 86. This cold front will start to knock temperatures down just a bit tomorrow, but a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly after 10. I'm hoping to avoid any severe weather, um, but, it, but it is certainly in the realm of possibility, and it just warrants keeping our eye on the weather over the next not quite 24 hours, but uh, I think close to at least. Then after that, we're talking about 80 on your Thursday, 4th of July, Friday is 79, 83 on your Saturday, 87 on your Sunday. We'll get back to the upper 80s next week, but oh, talking about a beautiful 4th of July forecast, it's going to stay, it's going to stay as we've been talking about for days, and we all should be able to enjoy some really nice weather and some much calmer and cooler and milder conditions. <music> Now, let me say this. I, it always works out this way. In a rush to get everything done and nothing working as it should. I'm only getting one side of audio coming out of my CD player, and I think it's going to affect this to some degree. I'll figure that out between now and tomorrow, and I've got plenty of chances to do this because we're going to go over this whole album. Turning Ground, their second CD, Cell of Mine, has got some phenomenal <laughs> acoustics, the lyrics, the writing, the melodies, the vocals from start to finish, and I'm, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a supporter of local talent or I like all of these guys. It's just really, really that good, and I can't wait to share with you the whole album. A lot of you folks got to hear the whole album at the Mountain Arts Center. Uh, a lot of you, I hope, are going to get to hear them this Friday at the Ramey Park for the Watermelon Social, and you're going to get them here in the news because I'm going to be playing a lot of them. And a lot of these songs were written by Nathan Arnett. Uh, most all of them were, and we'll get to that. This one wasn't, but it was just the vocals on it just kind of all just uh, grabs you. So we're going to play that tonight. It's When a Man Can't Get a Woman Off His Mind, track number 11. Enjoy it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Shows me like a vine. It's crazy. It's eight o'clock, it's almost four a.m. My mind keeps painting pictures of you out loving him. I just crushed a Dixie cup for running out of wine. It gets crazy. When a man can't get that woman off his mind When a man can't take memory He runs hot and cold and blind Well, he ain't 